Good evening, everyone. Uh, Derek Ferreira here with you on this uh, Thursday night as we are getting ready for the weekend here. And I hope everyone has their weekend plans set. I sure as heck have my plans already set for the weekend. But also, we are day two of our heat wave here in Rhode Island. Of course, I'm not going to be talking about that. I'm going to be talking about what is happening here in the tropics. So, we got our two systems over here still. We do have Tropical Depression Fred and Invest 95L. Now, I will say this. They are doing well this afternoon uh, thanks to the effects of dry air and wind shear. Uh, Tropical Depression Fred is attempted to start rebuilding its near core thunderstorm after they were shredded by Hispaniola yesterday. And let's get to 95L. 95L, by the way, 70% uh, chance of a formation through 48 hours and five days. And of course, we're going to be talking about 95L. Uh, momentarily so what are we going to be doing here first uh, we're going to be talking about tropical depression Fred uh, tropical depression Fred as you can see in this satellite imagery um, this product is useful because what this product does is it distinguish shadow low-level clouds white gray uh, from deeper thunderstorm activities, which are the yellow and red. And Fred has had a lot more of the former than the latter since making landfall in Hispaniola yesterday. We did talk about that. Though some activity seems to be redeveloping, especially east of the center this evening. And this redevelopment of convection in the storm's Eastern part is due to the westerly wind shear imparted on the storm by an upper level low over Florida. You already saw the uh, images yesterday, and that was something that we talked about over the past few days. And the reason why I did not put the images is because there isn't much more to say at this point. Uh, the low will gradually weaken as it retreats back into the southeastern United States this weekend, but its west southwesterly winds and dry air is going to continue to impact Fred until the storm makes landfall in Florida. Uh, this low, combined with Fred's current state of disorganization, means our going forecast of a week to perhaps a mid-strength tropical storm impacting southern Florida Saturday. Still looks good. Now, here is the spaghetti plots. And yes, I did have my spaghetti for dinner tonight. As I talked about in the video last night. And as you can see from the spaghetti plots of the ensembles of the European, um, it's pretty similar as it was when we last talked about Fred last night. Uh, given Fred's struggles today, uh, the scenario of a strong tropical storm curving north a bit earlier seems pretty safely off the table. I will say that right now. The most likely scenario remains landfall in the Florida Keys or in the southern Florida Peninsula as a weak tropical storm, maybe a tropical depression, though it's also possible that the system remains extremely disorganized and slides west of Key West. And it's possible that Fred will turn north, northwest just after the landfall in southern Florida, in which case it would probably dissipate over the peninsula while bringing very heavy rain, especially to Florida's east coast. A more likely outcome 
is that Fred will slide into the Eastern Gulf where conditions might be more hospitable for intensification. Some of the ensemble members, uh, they show Fred intensifying into a moderate or even strong tropical storm if it can remain far enough off the Florida coast and can fend off continued southwesterly wind share. Neither is a guarantee, but it's possibility worth keeping an eye on for residents. If you're from, um, I, I'm going to put the old um, clicker right here. So resident from Tampa, I'm just going to put, put this right here. Tampa, north to Tallahassee. And west towards Mississippi and Alabama. I'll just put that over here as well. You got to watch for the storm. But in my personal opinion, I think the western edge of the range of possible outcomes for Fred Central Track is somewhere around Mobile, Alabama. But folks... As far west as New Orleans, so yes, I'm going to have to draw out Louisiana. Might pick up some gusty showers Monday. So overall, unless upper level winds relax enough to allow for a period of intensification occurs in the Gulf, Fred seems like it will remain a fairly weak system from a wind slash surge perspective, rainfall is going to be another story. And that's something that we're going to get into next here. So here is the rainfall. Uh, this is from the WPC, uh, their rainfall forecast. It shows four to six inches of rain expected to most of Florida. All the way inland into Georgia, North Carolina. So what I'm going to do here, you know, you know the drill, people. I'm going to draw this out and kind of show you where we're going to deal with this heavy rain. And that is where uh, Fred or whatever is going to be of Fred will wander early next week. Flash flooding is likely in these areas, depending, of course, on where these heavy rainfall bands set up and hang out. So if your area is um, susceptible to high water during heavy rain events, you know, make sure you do have your plans ready, uh, just in case it impacts. You know, I know this is not, a hurricane, but be prepared uh, for the worst case scenario if anything happens when it comes to flooding. And I already talked about, you know, the big story when it comes to tropical storms. I don't need to um, get into that again tonight. Y'all know, watch my past videos from the last few days and you'll get the drift. So... That is going to do it for Fred. And we're going to be um, actually showing you... Hold on just a sec. This is the um, forecast from the NHC. Still has it as a depression. And you already got tropical storm watches already in effect uh, for the Florida coast. So we're probably going to see more of these watches uh, tonight, tomorrow, tomorrow. Uh, you do have some tropical storm watches in the coastal parts of Cuba. But mainly Florida, you're under a tropical storm watch. So that's, um, like I said, that's going to do it for Fred here. And we're going to be talking about 95L. 95L uh, continues to move westward. Hasn't really decided where it wants to put the center of circulation. And... Activity today did simmer down a bit. Uh, thunderstorms have been redeveloping as of this evening. And you can see that right over here. Um, 
with this imagery. And this is near the both near both the northern and the southern areas of spin associated with the wave. And the satellite wind data suggests that the northern area is was pretty close to closing off a circulation this morning, but there's still a bit of rotation in both the low and mid levels down south. And based on that wind data from this morning and the satellite trends that people saw this afternoon, I think if we see a circulation close off in this wave, I'm going to put my money uh, on this northern part right here. And this is going to have important implications when it comes to a track perspective and by association, the intensity forecast. So let's talk about that here. Um, all right. So here we go. And this map over here, and this is, of course, from Tropical Tibbets. Uh, Levi Cowan, who's been doing such a great job. I got to give him a shout out. Uh, this here is wind shear anomalies. And this is across the Atlantic during the time when 95L will be moving through the Caribbean. And there's three general veritables uh, when it comes to the system's track through this area. Through the Caribbean Sea. Over the Caribbean islands or through the southwestern Atlantic. And you can see that from this image over here. Let's talk about the first possibility. And the first possibility is the farther south through low shear Caribbean, which is this over here. And the reason why this is the least likely is that it's going to provide the system with the best environment for intensification with lower wind shear and warm waters. And what's most likely at this point is probably a track very similar to what we had to deal with Fred and Elsa uh, through the Northern Lesser Antilles before heading towards Hispaniola. Though this would probably favor the least intensification due to land interaction, flood and rain would be a big concern for the Caribbean islands. And it's also possible that the system tracks farther north. Uh, I talked about this in the uh, video uh, I think it was last night, but I know it was Tuesday night. Um, I think it was last night I talked about it because of the Icon run, what it had late Tuesday night. It had the system track farther north through the southwest Atlantic. And there's plenty of warm water and in those areas. And it's preliminary indication shows the potential for more wind shear, which would hamper its ability to intensify. So that brings us back to the system's current dilemma between developing the southern edge of its wave access or the northern edge. Now, if the northern edge continues developing, we're going to be talking about a track over or north of Hispaniola which is this track right here. And if the southern center emerges um, victorious, then the great the Caribbean scenario would be on the table as well as intensification with the greater Antilles. So until this dilemma is resolved, probably tomorrow or Saturday, because the wave is going to slow down and it's going to move over warmer waters. So it's going to allow for convection to consolidate. And there isn't too much else to say about the long-term forecast of 95L. Uh, the odds, as per usual, are someone stacked 
again, major development. But hey, it's hurricane season, and we have a disturbance moving over warm waters. And it's in the direction of land that we're going to have to keep a close eye on it. And by the way, um, I'm leaning more towards uh, this scenario right here based on what we're seeing um, with the model runs. So the model runs tonight um, will give us another indication. Uh, we'll see what happens. So if we do see something in the models, of course, I'm going to be talking about it here. All right. So um, that is it for this evening. I hope everyone has a great Friday. Um, great start to the weekend. I hope, like I said, if you got weekend plans, you know, I hope you guys enjoy it. And until then, I am out. Peace. And love.